Hello everyone, I think we're really live. <laughs> this is Ian from the fourth place. Welcome to the premiere episode of Heroes of Four Worlds. If you're new, this show is an actual play D&D &D campaign show. Oh god, I can hear myself. Perfect. There we go. Uh, this is an actual play D&D &D campaign show. We're off to a great start, which means we're going to be using Dungeons and Dragons to tell a story for you live on TV, on the internet. And when we say live, we mean we can screw up like I just did. Uh, so welcome to the ride. Uh, let me let me start. I'm going to introduce the cast. When I introduce each of them, I'm going to ask them to say their name. Well, I will have said their name, but they're going to repeat their name and give you their uh, pronouns, maybe something about themselves if they want. They're then going to give you their characters' names, pronouns, and a little something about that character, like maybe the class and race or whatever they think is the, 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 the summary. Uh, and they can also, if they want, they can say what's up with their character lately to start in with the recap. Once everyone's done that, I'm going to catch everyone up a little bit more as well, so that if you missed the first episode, you're no more lost than I am right now. So, with that in mind, uh, first up, I'm going to introduce Cage. Hey everybody, I'm Cage. I use she, hers pronouns, and today I will be playing Tanya, the total barbarian. Uh, she is the bearer of an ancient egg, and I think we're all excited to see what that actually means. <laughs> and Tanya all sees as she hears pronouns. Perfect. Uh, next up, we have Tucker. Hi there, I'm Tucker. I use uh, she, he, or they pronouns. I play Nicodemus, who uses he pronouns. Uh, he is a demigod who's also a paladin for his mother, uh, who is Eris, the goddess of strife. Uh, currently, he's followed his wayward twin sister to God knows where. Good description. All right. Uh, next up, we have Jamila. Hi, I'm Jamila. I um, I use she, her pronouns, as does my character, Maraja, who is a um, the, living in the dream world. Um, and recently, she has a bunch of new visitors and friends, which is unusual for <laughs> this um, state of her world, which is quite empty and abandoned, but more soon. Perfect. All right, next I believe we have Eric. Hi, I'm Eric. Uh, he, him. I am playing uh, Dima, who uses he or they pronouns. Uh, Dima uses Ian's new Wizard of Legend uh, yeah. character class uh, and is some kind of wizardly fake being as a result. Uh, and he uh, did a teleportation ritual which went wrong and got um, Maraja uh, these new friends. Perfect. Yep. Uh, and uh, finally, Clove. Hey, uh, this is Clove, she, her pronouns. Uh, I am playing the wayward twin sister, uh, Lamia, formerly known as Tyro. But, uh, oh man, I guess it was my antics that kind of got this all rolling in the first place. I uh, guess. <laughs> formerly Paladin of Eris, more recently uh, made a pact with the Fae and decided to discard uh, <laughs> my parents' favor. So uh, we're just seeing how that goes. And now it's time to Eldritch Blast some nasty fog. <laughs> Perfect. All right, let's see if I can do the quick version of summing everyone up. I've been faking urgency to record videos to get people to come to this. So now that fake urgency feels like real panic. Uh, so I'm gonna try to calm it down a little. Um, so we mentioned that Nico and Lamia are twins. They are the demigod children of Eris, the goddess of strife, uh, raised on the moon to be paladins. They were due to be given their great quest. Well, pretty much now. Uh, which is uh, what led Lamia, who's long had doubts, uh, to run into the woods on the moon where they were raised and make a pact with a fae spirit uh, who appeared as sort of a familiar glowing light, which we may recognize more of over time. Uh, so that's uh, what's interesting, though, is that uh, after making that pact, Dima appeared either as the embodiment of the patron, a messenger of the patron, or maybe just the patron itself. Uh, I think that'll become more clear over time, too. Uh, when that happened, down on the world, Tanya, our tortle, uh, the most down-to-world person in the party, uh, saw the moon's ring itself uh, contract and then later seemed to reappear in the opposite point across the sky briefly. Uh, when she did that, there was a cold chill that ran through her egg, uh, which uh, is always a little bit warm, but legend says will get very hot uh, when something important is about to happen to both the egg and Tanya. Um, somewhere else, uh, 
in, in an abandoned, foggy place. Maraja is alone, was alone after everyone else there disappeared and had just found and read a note from her mother, uh, the last one to go, telling her to escape and be curious. Um, around that same time, Lamia was rushing back to her room to grab her stuff, ran into Nico. They had a family squabble, which unexpectedly ended in Nico insisting on going along. Uh, so Nico is, uh, uh, in order to make sure that Lamia doesn't get in further trouble, going to go get in that trouble with her. Perfect. Uh, at that point, all three together, Dima tried to teleport the three of them off the world, but not expecting so many passengers, some miscalculations may have been made. Uh, specifically, they landed in Mirage's home, uh, which I guess we all know now used to be the place that people went when they dream, and they used to go there, uh, and they were able to meet each other together. Uh, but Mirage, as she said, has not seen anyone in a long time. Uh, somehow, the tether that Dima had to the world where they were going to go seems to have backfired and grabbed Tanya, who had actually met the twins before when they were kids, when she was uh, doing some labor for their dad, a, a, a perfectly respectable halfling. Uh, <laughs> since then, uh, they found themselves in a marble-floored, disintegrating library with uh, collapsing shelves and... Uh, Cliffs going off into infinite darkness, and uh, the place itself seemed to turn into fog. Uh, when Lamia tried to drop something down one of those holes and see just how deep they were, the fog tried to bite her! And we found ourselves in combat with a, a vast swirling cloud of uh, nearly immaterial fog that takes up the place. Dimma discovered that stuff seems to be stopping teleportation magic, and that's, I believe, where we found the party. So we're back in combat right at the top of the show. We just had Dimma's turn at the end of the last show. So, Lamia, what are you going to do? I am going Eldritch Blast that fog. It's, it's a good blast. So tell yeah. me, so is that, a, it, remind me, is that a, an attack roll? It is. I'm just looking for it. Here we go. Let's see. Did that go through? No. Let's, let's, oh, never mind. A bunch of dice. Wow, that's really sad. I'm still watching them wobble. Oh, it really does take its time. That's really harsh. All right. That, wait. So the good news, though, is I believe, and I will just double check, but I believe that hits. Yeah, that's also a one, though. <laughs> what? Oh, one damage? Yeah, that's, we've rolled poorly on damage before. Let me just, <sighs> yeah. So, what um. Once again, uh, that ring. having happened, uh, sorry, I have to get to the right screen. As, as some folks know behind the curtain, I have got about 19 screens. I guess things do with finger gun. All right, so what you see in that situation is that, uh, and for those of you watching, actually, uh, I feel the map as you're seeing our world. So first of all, you can see the map with most of the players on it. I think you're missing. There we go. There's everybody. And. What you see is with that amount of damage. Well, you can all see that. Uh, some of the fog in the distance disappears. Oh, that's your action? Are you going to do anything else with your turn? No. All right. That would move us on to Nico. Actually, sorry, no, to the fog. Oh, no. And so I was half right when I said the name Nico. Uh, Nico, can you make me a constitution saving throw? Let's see here. Does this have the book that I gave you from last session? What's that? I had a buff that I had given last session. Oh, right. Yes, what did you give them? Um, it was... There definitely are hearts on a couple of Was it of bless? People. I think it was bless. Okay. Yeah, yeah so I think you get a plus D4 to your saving throw, so... Oh, thank goodness. Let's give this a go. Uh, it just popped up on my end, but that's a three. Uh, so that's nine total. Great, that does not cut the yep. mustard. Let's see what happens. Oof. Um, so you are going to take nine necrotic damage. 
Can you take that? And, uh, it's going to be bad because he's definitely unconscious now. Oof. Oof. Okay, we've got our first player down. Imagine that. Oh, Nico. All right, so at this point, uh, do you can, you can have short reactions in other people's turns, so if anybody has feelings they want to express very briefly, they can. I mean, Nico's the only person that Tanya knows, so she's probably like, no! <laughs> I mean, that she thinks she knows. Technically, she also, um, uh, she also knows Lamia, but she just doesn't know that she knows Lamia. <laughs> Are we doing curse on this? <laughs> What's that? Are we allowed to curse on this? Can you remove curse on this? You could try. No, no, no. How are we allowed? Like on the show? No, oh, you allowed, allowed to curse? Oh, sorry, I misheard you. Yeah, you can. Uh, of course. Okay, because uh, the, only thing, the only thing Lamy is gonna do is she's gonna see Nico drop right in front of her and be like, "Shit." <laughs> Just like, yep. He's even smaller now because he's on the ground, crumpled. <laughs> and with that, oh, I go, was that me? Uh, <laughs> uh, with that, we are on to. Oh, Nico's turn is out. Uh, so we're on to Miraja. Okay, so I want to like revive oh, him. Yep. So, um, wouldn't I? Couldn't I use like um, uh, what's the one I'm looking for? So well, so well, she's thinking. I'm gonna tell the audience uh, that Jamila is our new player, and so I like to remind her even more than I do everyone else that it's okay for you in a D and D game to just say what you're trying to do and for the dungeon master to be involved in coming up with what that means in the system. Uh, so uh, you're trying to heal? I'm trying to, I guess, like revive, whatever. Yeah, so he is on, so uh, just a, a brief primer on unconsciousness and death actually at this point. Uh, so when you go down unconscious, you become prone, which is can be bad in some circumstances. Um, you also can't take actions, um, and indeed, you, which can you know, be bad in some things get some advantage against you. Uh, you mm -hmm. are at, when you are unconscious, you are at zero hit points. You then will begin making death saves. So you, a death save is just to roll a d10, unless you're special. I think Nico might be. Um, you might want to check your class features between now and your next turn, Nico, because on your turn you'll make a death saving throw. Uh, sorry, your oh, uh, I, your race features. Um, uh, yeah, I. I was going to ask you, uh, because it was technically my turn, did you want me to make a death oh, save? Oh, that's right. Bro? We didn't skip your turn. You should. I'm so sorry. You're right. You should make a death save on your turn. Look at me. Um, no worries. Yep. Uh, and I believe it's a d20. Uh, yes, and I think there's something special roll. about your race. So let me just check that out. Well, you roll a d20. I'll see if you I'm add anything to that it. checking that out. Oh, sure. I will roll it now. Oh, yes. You have advantage on death saving throws that when you make them on your own turn. So if something forces a death saving throw, you don't. Okay, so I will. I'll just roll twice. Yep, just roll a d twenty twice. One and two. Ooh. Wow. That, oh, ooh, that's, that's one that's... failure. Uh, com, uh, so you only get one oh. failure or one success per round. Once you've got, I think it's three failures, uh, you're dead. Uh, so every round you get to do that. But if someone heals you, if someone casts a spell that grants you hit points, you are automatically up to at least one. You don't go into the negative when you're unconscious hit point, uh, so you return to at least one or whatever they add, and you're conscious again, but you're still prone. So... Yeah, I'm the right choice becoming a cleric. Yes, becoming a cleric is a very good thing, especially because the only other person I know of in this party who can give people hit points is the paladin who just uh, fell on his... <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I so believe then, you've got some spells that might help you with this, yeah. Right, so I could, in this case, use Bless. Is that the equivalent of, like, reviving no blesses is, is i think what they already had on them uh oh okay sorry so uh i bet you're looking word? for you've got two you've got cure wounds okay. um and you've got healing words so cure wounds uh takes a full action and restores 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier so 1d8 plus four okay. hit points to someone as a full action i believe healing word yes healing word is a bonus action and it, it restores 1d4 plus 4 hit points. So well, if you've got something then, else you have to do, you can do a fast heal, or you can do a better heal. Well, couldn't I do Cure Wounds and then also a bonus Good action? Good question. Because... You can't because you can't cast two spells in the same turn. Oh. Uh, so these are all good questions that I'm explaining it live because... So there is something interesting that people with spells should know, is that you cannot cast two spells in the same turn, but you can cast a spell and a cantrip in the same turn. So as long as one of them is a cantrip and one of them is a spell of first level or higher, and as long as one takes an action and one takes less than an action, 
But for now, the main thing you need to know is that you could... So you could, for instance, cast uh, Hold the Dead or Word of Radiance as an action to attack the fog and also cast Healing Word. Or okay. you could cast uh, Cure Wounds, which is a bigger heal, and do some lesser action. I think there's also okay. a range consideration. Okay, so, like, Cure Wounds, though, um, like, how, can, how much can I expect he will get HP? Yeah, with Cure Wounds, uh, he, you will average uh, nine and a half hit points okay. of healing. That seems like a full heal for him, right? It's, it's just over what he just took, so I'm guessing it's okay. more than half of what he can take. Okay, I want to do that, Cure Wounds, and then, um, like, I guess I'll move closer. Okay, so in in D and D Beyond, you should be able to click the cast button mm -hmm. next to okay. Cure Wounds, and I think it'll even okay. roll the dice for us. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. Six healing. All right. So you, actually, I'm sorry. You have to be able to touch him, so you would have to move up first. So if you move yourself oh, adjacent to him. Okay. So like here. Um, mm -hmm. that'll put you next to the fog. Yeah. I will yeah. say. That, remember, you can move diagonally too if you want. For so you could move. You'd still be adjacent to the fog, wouldn't you? I don't know if, if you don't. Very... If you don't want to be, uh, well, like, also I... adjacent to the fog, you could be closer like, to like Lamia. Like, like, like back one more. Okay. Well, yeah. I was just saying, like, maybe I should be here to see if, like, the fog doesn't like me. Oh, yeah, right. Because you're, you're special. Oh, you remembered. <laughs> Something happened the last time the fog yeah. was adjacent to you. Right. right. Okay. So maybe, so, maybe I'll Oh, and also, as a no. note... Go ahead, Tucker. Oh, uh, as a note, I uh, I was already damaged from last game and was already below half my hit points. Okay, so um, maybe you have more than 18 total. Why not? Okay. So, okay, so now I moved here, and then, yep. um, so now, so, like, that number I rolled, is that good? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. So, uh, Tucker, you get to gain those six HPs. You are conscious and still prone. Okay. Good job having a healer in the party, everybody. Well done <laughs> guessing, or rather getting totally lucky and landing in another dimension with a healer. <laughs> All right. Are you doing anything with your... There's not much you can do with your bonus action, I suspect, so I suspect your turn. You could actually keep moving, too, if you wanted to. I, I think I'm okay there. Well, hopefully I don't die, because then I'm screwed, but... Okay. So, in that case, the fog... Uh, so, uh, the fog is uh, going to start to move. So what you're going to see is some of the fog... And I'm just going to sort of move it, but it's the fog, this, this clump of fog is, sort of, fog is generally flowing towards the group. Um, okay. And... I don't like where this is going, rather literally. Okay, so maybe that was a mistake. <laughs> well, oh, sorry, that's I didn't mean to put one over you. That's a wrong yeah. spot. There. All right. Well, and with that, it is Tanya's turn. Yeah, so you oh, all probably oh, go ahead. would not necessarily know this about Tanya, but um, her rage is generally triggered by um, a feeling that the egg that she carries is in danger. However, having seen Nicodemus go down and feeling a very, like, motherly or maybe anti, you might say, uh, <laughs> uh, protection, um, she Is there will, something you would like to do? <laughs> she would like to use her bonus action, uh, and she would like to rage. <laughs> um and she will get up right next to uh, Nicodemus and Raja, so she is within that melee range with the fog, mm -hmm. um, and she will use her trident to attack it. All right. Um, go ahead, and make that attack roll. I'm trying to imagine what sound oh, a raging no! tortoise makes. Welp. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you should, she's just so, so upset. <laughs> yeah, she's so upset, and you didn't say that you were going to attack recklessly, as I recall. So oh, no, nope, I was not. <laughs> so um, yeah, that does very little. Um, you've used your bonus action, and you're going to use any more of your move now, or are you going to hang out there? Uh, I think she'll probably hang out there. Right. So kind of putting up. She's a feeling very protective. Yeah, putting up sort of a defensive. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. The fog then is going to make a swing at Tanya. 
And by swing, I mean sort of blow and envelop towards and really mm -hmm. not act that aggressive at all because it's fog. Uh, so if you could make a constitution saving throw. Mm -hmm. I think you're pretty good at those. Yes. Our rolls are not good, though. No. It's so, still an 11. 11. We're having a 6 on the die. That's not bad for a level 2 character. Yep. Yep. Um... In this so situation, actually, left, in this situation, you I'm going to grant you advantage on that, so why don't you take another roll? That was not yes. enough, but there is reason for you to... Oh my god! <laughs> no! Fate is fate, I'm afraid. Let's find out how bad this is for our party. <sighs> Ian, you're going to be the actual death of us. <laughs> I sure hope not, because I, this, this, I, I thought I... Let's find out. <laughs> Maybe I'm used to playing much higher level characters, but I might have a very high AC and a very high strength in con. Yeah. I feel like my hit points are not as great as they could be. <laughs> well, you, well, yeah, you're about to find out because you take seven. Oh, we're good. We're good, fam. Um, and your maximum HP are reduced by six. <gasps> what? Temporarily, oh, as we good. discussed with some other characters, uh, until your next long rest, your max HP are also are reduced. So make a note of that. Mm. Not into that. I but that wouldn't like be either. Sort it for Nico, so. And that brings us around to Dima. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so as you may recall, I uh, kind of grabbed hold of the fog magically last time and started to age oh. it. Yep, you had a uh, um, weight of ages on it. Yep, mm -hmm. so I just get to continue doing that, right? It's uh, I I think I will because I don't like where this is going. I'm going to back up a little bit because mm -hmm. which I also don't like. Just letting you get close to the crystal, but uh, many concerns here. Yep. Anyway, I will continue to focus the weight of ages. Yep. So you just need to roll damage, right? Double checking. Yes, I think it is already hit. So it's just another one d twelve necrotic damage. That's all. Just just one d twelve. I mean, that could be high or low. Yep. Oof. Oh, I accidentally rolled twice. Well, I'll take the first one, I guess. Oh, yeah, sometimes it does that. So you do it three damage. However, I think you're going to be happy with the result. One. Okay. Two. Oh. Oh, wow, it looks now like it's super susceptible to necrotic damage. Now, you, you can all tell that the fog isn't gone. Um, there, is, there is more fog in the distance, but that seems to have been enough damage to clear out the fog that was immediately uh, adjacent to y'all. And uh, are, are we still in initiative order? You are still or, in initiative uh... order. There is fog okay. that is still around. I've just moved the... And you can, you can zoom your maps as much as you want, and I'm just adjusting the map that the stream can see. Uh, make sure that they can see... You're in a pretty big space, and at some distance away, there is more fog. Okay. So, with that in mind, it's the fog's turn uh, again. Uh, actually, oh, you um, have more if of your I turn. can... Yes, because um, do I still have my uh, wizardly sight thingy active, I can't, which was a bonus action? I can't remember. As a, you, can, you, can, you can turn it back. It, it always ends at the beginning of your turn, so it's up from when you start it until the beginning of your next turn, and you can start uh. it again. So okay. did you so did you just use a bonus action or a full action or nothing at all to to use that spell? The spell was an ordinary action. Yep, was an action. Okay, so, so you still I have would, a bonus action. Yeah, so I would like to activate my magical sight cuz uh, I don't know if I'll be able to figure it out this turn, but I want to determine if it will be if we'll be able to teleport back out. Yes, there is there is now significantly less anti teleportation magic in the room, but there is still some affecting that crystal. Okay, all right, we have to clear it all out. And with that, different is going to happen. Someone appears with a with a very fast and a little bit of a clap, and looks completely confused for a second. Well, that finally worked. You see before you a uh, 
about five foot ten elderly man wearing dark gray robes, a big floppy gray hat. He has on his person a red, a small pin of a red crown, a uh, blue shield, uh, some purple thread, and I think that's the only ones you'd be able to see right now. Uh, oh, sorry, and there is a green leaf that you can see, which is also probably on his hat. Uh, and they're all very brightly colored, but they seem to be... The, the leaf is a real leaf. The thread is just some thread. The 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 pin is, is sort of a... The pins are metallic colors, but they're very vibrant. They're almost too colorful um, compared to the complete lack of color in his clothing, his hair, his beard, uh, which is a very faded gray, and his eyes, which look like they've sort of faded to gray. What the hell are you all doing here? I live here. That's fair. Shooting fog? Tanya's just like, I, <laughs> she has no idea why she's there. So I, why could, all right, sorry. I was, thought my spell hadn't worked. Took a second and then it worked. Um, you're, you're really here. Yeah, and I think you're trapped here. Well, that makes sense. Does it, though? <laughs> well, yeah, because... Um, this place is a mess. I'm sure you've noticed. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm going to, like, drift away from this old dude who just showed up and uh, go shoot any fog that's within line of sight. Right. We are still in initiative, so that is a perfect time, in fact, because the next turn, I believe, was Lamia's. So, what are you going to do? Okay, so just looking at what I can see here, it looks like there's a crack to the south, which is within my uh, sight range, and I can see a cloud on the other side of that. Is that correct? Yes, that cloud uh has uh some uh, we'll, we'll we'll call it uh three quarters cover <laughs> <laughs> which well. is a rule that i'll have to look up because i don't use cover very often but since you're choosing well, to shoot through i have a uh, spell sniper so oh right does that give you it gives me step four cover i can't remember if um it looks like i'll have to look it up specifically unfortunately no that's cool i will too because i like to and, and so just so everyone on the stream knows, we are. It's a target. Go ahead. Uh, no, now uh, you're muted. Cover cover gives uh, a oh. creature. I hear you now. I. I can hear you now. I was wrong. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, three quarters covers gives a creature plus five ace. Okay. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. Spell Sniper no. ignores three quarters cover. Then you're in luck. Uh, yeah. That's gonna that's that's real good for for you. Um, <laughs> I think those pauses are good for this game. Just as a reminder, we've got one totally brand new player here. I haven't DM'd Dungeons and Dragons in almost twenty years. Uh, we're we're trying to be very beginner friendly, so we're all happy with double checking the rules here and making and sure even everyone. Even though I play all the time, along. I literally have no idea what I'm doing at any point in time. <laughs> there's there's so. a lot of rules. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there are books and, and internet websites galore that will help, help you find the rules. So make your attack. Let's see how this goes. That is a 16. That is a palpable hit. And, how much, and for five force damage. Oops. Is there a reason why it rolled two d10s for that? Um, I'm just looking at the three d dice. Oh, I don't know. But it seems like the right result. Yeah, the result says it's rolling one d10. Yeah, I have no idea what the extra one is for, but I trust the result. So. Yeah. If I can. I think that it's just a uh, poor generation because. Um... Oh. Clove rolled a 10 for the 20. But, you know. Yeah. Bear with me one sec. I'm having a little trouble with the editor. Um, but I will describe to you that you see a bunch of the fog uh, contiguous with that fog uh, disappear. In fact, I think you see, yeah, everything contiguous with that fog is going to as a result Ooh. of that palpable blast. I will just make it go away on the map. Now that I am in the right place. Oops. 
action. Ooh. Oh. Yes. Oh, snap. Damn. So, oh, so like you, everything, everything. So there's a little bit left that you guys can't see directly, yeah. but what you would see is just that the fog in the air is not completely gone. So you would have a sense that the fog is not uh, completely absent. Ah, uh, and... Uh, with that in mind, I think what you probably see next is some f is that you don't see <laughs> some fog moving. So that brings us over to Nico's turn. Right, he's gonna get up and go ow, um, and turn and heal um, Lamia with lay on hands for six points. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Lamia, well, I mean, take six. Remember, you lost six off of your maximum. So, oh, you're at, which means you're at your maximum, I think. Well, um, I thought, but it's been over a turn since she took the damage. Does it come back? No, she took damage, but she lost off of her maximum uh, for some longer period of time. Oh, I thought yep. it's only for a turn that we lost. Yeah. Uh, since you know, no, yeah. So since that was unclear, what I will say is, um, you can choose whether to use up those HP from your pool. Or whatever type of action it was taking, but not both, since it didn't have an effect. That is just a DM being nice rule. <laughs> uh, no, I, sorry. So, are all of us who was hit, who were hit by the fog, are we all like? Yes, yeah. everyone who's hit by the fog is feeling less themselves. They didn't take any physical damage, and so instead they just feel very weak. Uh, on sort of every level, including uh, as a paladin, you would know sort of a spiritual level. Right. Uh, I, yeah. just, I'm just trying to figure out if I'm able to heal anybody at this point because uh, I'm confused on what our maxes are and when they go oh, away. Yeah. So I'm everyone, down one yeah. hit point. So everyone who got hit lost six max. from their maximum, but some of them lost more than six from their from of their hit points. Right. So some but people have from... a, some people have a little healing left, but no one has a lot needed. I think. Right. I mean, is was this a result of like the fog's regular attack? chipping away or was there something extra special that made damage to our maximum hp uh those, I, i'm trying to think if anyone was hit more than once i'm not sure whether you would know the answer to that yet yeah because nico was hit more than nico once was, yeah. oh right yes so nico would be aware that it was worse the first time as if it got something out of you that was there to get gotten okay so i yeah. heal myself three basically before i hit my temporary max yes. which i guess i will do because uh i don't see any other fog and i'm hurting real bad sensible and that is it for nico okay then on the fog's partial turn some more fog moves and that brings us around to miraja Okay, um, okay, so, like, there's this attack here called Toll of the Dead, and it's a necromancy cantrip. Um, so it says the, targets, the target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take 1d8 necrotic damage. If the target is missing any of its hit points, it instead takes 1d12 necrotic damage. The spells, and it says I have a range of 60 feet, so I don't know, is the like, yeah, so, so 60 feet and probably something you can see so i'm not sure whether you have line of sight on any of the fog right now so you may have to move um, to yeah. see more fog. you'd currently be within 60 feet of the fog just from looking at it but i don't know if you can move to a, a point you probably if you can head like directly south that would be your best way of getting a viewpoint on the edge of that fog but I couldn't, like, go here or whatever, right? I think it's probably too far. You, oh, okay. you, have you, can that 30, you can go 30 feet as your movement, and you can double it if you also use up your action. So each square is five feet, so you can go six squares. And you, what you could do is you could go six squares and then stop and see what you can see. And remember yeah, I that think that, that spot would be your best vantage. Okay. I think that's within 30 feet, and you'd see that last piece of fog. And you can okay. see some, Yes, that is... Yep. So if you move, just moved there with your movement, you still have your action and your bonus action. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to do that, move there, oh, and then yeah. I'm going to do... So if I did, like, the Toll of the toll of the Dead, um, then, like, could I would still have another action after that? Um, toll of the Dead is 
What is the, is it an action or a bonus action? Say one action. One action. So then you would have you have used your you you have used your movement. That would be your regular action. You would still have a bonus action left. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm gonna do um, Toll of the Dead. So I will cast that. Oh my God! Please work. Um, so is the target missing any of its hit points is what it asked me. It's, if, it's not clear because you don't know whether these are all one fog or different fogs. Okay. So, so what's it say? Yes or no? Uh, I would say that you can roll the dice and I think it'll show us both results anyways. And I can, I will well, show before it, it rolls, it threw up a modal that asked me. Oh, I see. Oh, so you have to, um, uh, I will say then yes, just to save us the trouble that it, it does, okay. it does seem to be missing. Are you serious? <laughs> That's the problem with so yeah, two d six is always better than one d twelve for that very reason. Wait, what so, so two d six, your minimum die roll you can have would be two because you guaranteed yeah. to at least get one on each die. Yeah. Whereas a one d twelve, your minimum is well, one. No, but the, but beyond that, right? The um the average of two d six is seven, right? Well, the average like yeah. I mean, the most common is seven, <laughs> while all the values are equal on a d12. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so you don't see exactly what happens. Um, some fog goes away somewhere. And the, the overall height of the fog, I guess, is percept is slightly uh, different. Out of curiosity, what, what does Toll of the Dead look like when it's cast? I have a oh. visual for most of these spells, but I have never heard of that one. So I will say uh, that's largely up to Miraja, but I do know that mostly what Toll of the Dead looks like is what it sounds like, because I believe the spell says that a bell, an ominous bell rings. Okay, let me see. So you can read the description from the spell, uh, and you're welcome to sort of put your own spin and flavor on that instead if you want. Okay, you point at one creature you can see within range and the sound of a Dolores bell fills the air around it for a moment. And then... Um, okay, so there's nothing to see. You just point and we hear that. Amazing. All right. Yeah. Um, and I guess what Miraja might have seen a little bit more because Miraja has line of sight on the, the critter. The, the fall. Um, but I still have one bonus action. Yes. Well, like, okay, so I guess... Um, I have two thoughts. One, what if like I moved all the way like over here and like, wait, how do I you make You don't have point? any movement left. Um, oh. So, uh, okay. actually, cool thing in D&D Beyond, who are not our sponsor despite how much I talk about it, um, you can go on your character and click on actions and then click on bonus action and see everything oh, okay. you've got that is a bonus action. Okay. Um, and I don't think any of them, I think I don't think you're close to any, close enough to anything to use any of them. Oh. Uh, you could you could cast Shield of Faith on someone. That's true. No, you just cast a spell, so you can't. Oh no, you cast a cantrip, so you can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Well, I'll just do Shield of Faith on somebody. Um. Do you guys? Who should I do it on? Oh, maybe. Um. Maybe on Eric because you're like another mage who's like wrecking those fools. <laughs> um. I will let you know uh, that Shield of Faith adds armor class, which is physical oh, yeah. protection, and that nothing here so far seems to have been going at your physical form in a way that also, armor has helped I with. appreciate the thought, but I usually stay out of places where I need armor class. <laughs> so you could save your spell. Oh. Yeah. But no. that being said, right, um, it's usually, it's okay, right? Like, we often don't use our bonus action, so don't okay. feel bad if you... Uh, yeah. you don't the have other two are the ones that matter really. more. Yeah. All right, I think... That probably brings us around. C2. Oh, Og is going to move some more. How did I get a fucking one? <laughs> I really need that fog to move a lot. The fog <laughs> flows further. And um, I didn't drop him into the thing here. And actually, for some reason, the token's not moving. So I'll just, I'm going to take the turn for uh, this wizard. Uh, and uh, let's see if I can remember sort of the sort of thing he says. Oh, yeah, I remember what he says. Uh, sorry. Uh, I, I don't know what you're all doing here, but I've got to save the Halls of Prophecy before this place falls apart. Or we, and I mean the world, is so fucked. And he just runs off. Uh, I can't move his token, unfortunately, but he runs his full movement just 12 squares away. And I think that puts him... No, no, okay. No, which away? There aren't very many away yeah, here. Towards... Yeah, so good question. So Bye. he moves... If you can, He's like, paint the board. Yeah. yeah, I'm about to do that. He moves to 
there. All right. So he dodges over the fire pit past the. I mean, he just he just between it's an old the man crack in, and the and the yeah, um, yeah. bookshelf. All he right, runs yep. around everything, but he just he just it's an old man in flip flops or <laughs> wooden sandals. Uh just just ungracefully just just trucking as just a beeline. <laughs> Um, and then actually, when he gets close, uh, he, he just reaches out and does some sort of a zap, uh, and the fog gets just a little bit thinner that you can see. And that brings it around to Tanya's turn. Which, thankfully, the fog moved, because since I'm in rage, if I want to hold my rage, I have to be able to hit something... Oh. And I think it moved. If I'm, if my calculations are correct, I think it moved just to a point where I can throw a dagger and hit it. <laughs> oh my god! Or at least, now, do you have to do damage, hit, or attack? I can't remember. Um, I th- it says. I think it's attack or take damage. So I think if even your if turn you ends and you haven't attacked a hostile creature, right? So, you so I just have to make the action of attacking it. Okay. Perfect. Um. So if I go five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. 30. If I go here, I would be able to presumably see that fog on the lower end. Yep. You actually could and, have seen that fog probably from where you were, too. Right, it, but a yeah. dagger range is 2060. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so for um, anyone curious, the weapons that have two ranges, uh, 20 feet is that at what point you can make a normal attack. For this one, it's 2060. So the, the first number, the 20, you can make a normal attack. Anything beyond the first number up to the second number you make with disadvantage, um, unless you have something that doubles those numbers, and it can't be thrown further than 60 feet. Mm-hmm. So I'm within 20 feet now of the fog. <laughs> nice. So, so you're going to throw a dagger. and you're, Yeah, and so you, I you, just made it, y'all. <laughs> now, are you attacking regularly or recklessly? Um, do I... Is reckless attack? Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's a couple reckless. levels later. I forget that we're at level two. I have reckless. When you make your first attack on your turn, you can decide to attack recklessly, giving you advantage on melee weapon. Oh, it's only melee. a melee weapon attack rolls, and I have okay. to throw this. So, okay, let's... Um, so I, I doing a reckless attack wouldn't make it much of a difference for me. All right, so let's see that range attack roll. Oh, I'll take that seventeen to hit. That hits. And your damage is seven piercing damage. Uh, which does not seem as effective. Yeah, see, I don't know why it rolled 2d4. It's just cause... showing them? Yeah, but it only gives you... Oh, wait. Is it... It's, a it's seven... taking the 3, because I get yeah. oh, a d4 plus 4, but yeah. I'm not sure what the 1 is for then. I don't know, but since the result is right, it doesn't really matter. So that's going to okay. actually do... Um, seven it damage. seems less damage than it looks like, but... Now there is no more fog uh, that is densely visible. There is just sort of the low rolling fog on the floor and still some fog above you as if there is a, is, is a little bit of fog in this place, uh, and uh, which means the fog doesn't have a turn, and we move to Dimma. Uh, so I think first I'm going to get up close to the crystal and, and judge, uh, try to see if it, um, it seems like we could maybe get out now. Um, um, I, I'll, I'll keep um, using my bonus action to keep my magic side active. Yep. Uh, there is a vestigial... Um, actually, let's see. So make an arcana check. Okay. So I, can, so I know what information to give you. Arcana, that's probably this. Did that roll? No. Let's click on this. As usual, a roll twice, taking the first one is an 11. Oh, bummer. All right, so with an 11, you can tell that there is there are still trace amounts of that energy, and it is possible that if you did the right thing, you could teleport. There is okay. So there's trace amounts of the anti-teleportation yeah. magic. There's still the resonant teleportation magic. So unclear yep. whether it would work. Okay. Um, I think after that, I will keep walking around uh, the crystal and kind of look over at uh, Maraja and say, uh, 
You said you lived here. Should we go after that guy? That Hall of Prophecy thing sounded important. Oh, you're I muted. Think yep. You're muted. Um, am I supposed to know anything about this Hall of Prophecy? Like, what do I know? Yeah, so roll it. Uh, you, let's see. Roll the higher of your history or arcana. Wait, but I, it's not my yeah. turn. So is that. Oh, it's okay. Like, it's knowledge and we're. Oh, uh, initiative oh, is certainly okay. soft right now. Okay, um, so you're saying roll a history? But whatever's higher, your sorry. history or your arcana. I'm not looking at it, so um, I'm not sure. Okay. Whatever so, you're better at. Mm, I can look and see. Arcana says it's possible four. it's the same. Yeah. Yeah, so arcana says plus four and history says plus four. Okay. Does that mean so yeah, roll an arcana slash history check for all either one. Okay. Okay. Um, please work. That 22. Oh, holy crap. Um, yeah, so you know that um, sometimes in this place, you hear an echoing voice, and it's it's a different voice each time, and it's speaking very important sounding words, um, and you would have known that with a low result. Um, you hear prophecies spoken even when you don't know who's speaking them in this place. And you know so that there is a room where like there that? are, you know this, yes, you specifically, mm -hmm have been in a room with that role where there are statues that all speak at once when that happens in whatever voice is spoken that time. Uh, and there are shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of scrolls and pieces of paper and stone tablets and various uh, written things, uh, written prophecies, short passages um, that uh, always come true. Um, and uh, that's important that's people were very protective of that place when there were people around wait a minute so like i'm not the only one who heard it other yes sorry yes everyone here would be like oh oh one of those and they would stop and they would listen and then if you went there or if you were there when it happened the and it wasn't like it happened it could be years between it happening but uh all the statues the voices would be coming from those statues and uh, the shelves, you know, if you if people said that sometimes they'd see boop, and and a little stone tablet or a little scroll or a little uh, piece of paper um, would appear somewhere on one of the shelves when those words were spoken. Okay. Um, so that's what you know, and that's probably good enough as a knowledge roll outside of your turn. Okay. I think that brings us around to where are we on now. I think it was Lamia next because it was Dima's mm -hmm. turn last. The Lamia. But I didn't like answer the question. Is that like okay? Well, you can say something now. Sorry, I should. Oh. Say, you're right. Yeah, you you can you can say something to them if you want during this. That's what you heard. That's what you knew rather. So you could explain this to people since Dima asked, or you could hesitate while you see what everyone's up to. I mean, I just asked the yes or no question. Like, should we go after him? <laughs> um, I I like I, okay. So I'm not sure because I don't know how like the information that I got relates to. Like, I know that he said that like you know, Hall of Prophecy, which I'm assuming is the stuff that, like, people in the dream world, like me, are familiar with, but, like... Okay, wait, so he said, so, like, Hall so he of Prophecy said, are, like, collapse, right? I'll remind you what he said, too. He said, I have to save the Halls of Prophecy before this place falls apart, or we, we, and by we I mean the world, are so fucked. And he is running like a, like a ridiculous elderly man okay. in flip-flops. <laughs> so that seems important to me, to save the Halls of Prophecy. Um... But I don't know why. You know they're important, but you may not. No one have ever may have ever really explained why it would. But it would have been a vibe among the people there that the, the halls were important. We should help. And on a related note, it's Lamia's turn. Yep. Um, I'd like to take this turn to make an investigation check to see if I can find the remaining fog. See if you can. Okay. Um. It's not currently visible, and um, there are multiple places it could be, but wherever it is, I'm going to find it, and I'm going to shoot it. <laughs> oh, okay. Make your investigation check. Investigation. I will find you, and I will kill you. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of how this is going. <laughs> my name is Lamia. You killed my brother, temporarily. Prepare to die. <laughs> I look... And I run away from home, and I pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> this is very accurate. Okay, and I'm all out of home. <laughs> oh, I'm not dead. What? <laughs> I'm, all... I said, I'm not dead. I said temporarily. <laughs> right. Make your 
investigation I check. Yet. No, no, I'm not. It, this is. I'm not getting an option to roll for this one, so I'm not really sure what happens here. Oh, for your skill, you may need to refresh D and D Beyond. It says I have passive int in, in parentheses. Oh, don't use your passive. Use under your skill block. You should see your act. You don't roll passive int. You roll it's act to the right of that. Of yeah, that so like I will use column. your passive int if I want to see if you noticed something. When you actively search, you use your active. Uh, 50. Did that work? Did I do it twice? Yeah, but the first one was, was still real good. All right, so I'm going to ping, and tell me if you see the ping, because it depends on where you're... Yeah, um, or she can't see it, but is she going to go towards she that? Can tell that, the, that? She can tell that the fog is denser in that direction because these little blobs of fog on the map really represent sort of whirling eddies of density. And so I'm comfortable that with that strong an investigation check, you would have a, you would have a sense that if there were more fog, it's over there. Time to get fucked. She's going to, like, move as quickly as she can in that, uh, in that line of sight direction. Yeah, so, so trying to get down here somewhere. I'm and gonna, this is like, a, as a reminder, I think the wizard was somewhere about here. Okay. Yeah, if um if Nico's still prone, I'm gonna like just like jump over Nico. <laughs> yep, you can move through you can move through allies, especially yeah. tiny younger brothers who are lying down. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> slam dunking on him. Can I turtle over my brother? Yeah, you, yes. He's not prone, got up to try to oh, heal right. you. Okay, he got up, like, that's fair. Oh, it's funnier that way, but you're right. Uh, so you can, part of me. <laughs> you can still squeeze through allies. Okay, so Where are you going? <laughs> I feel like this is such the narrative that it's just like Lamia running around and Nika being like, where are we going now? <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Eventually, I think Nika will gain more agency, but since Nika's whole plan was can't leave my sister alone, that kind of makes sense to me. <laughs> What does being prone mean versus, like, unconscious? Yes. Oh, actually, here, I'll even read it to you. So prone means you're lying down, and specifically, a prone creature's only movement option is to crawl unless they use their, half their movement to stand up. Um, well, you're prone, Some you have... a small little dude crying on the floor. Yeah, it just means you're lying down is what prone means. Uh, when you're prone, you have disadvantage on, on all attack rolls and, atta and melee attack rolls, or technically attack rolls against you from someone who's within five feet of you. Uh, they have advantage. And if they're further than five feet from you, they have disadvantage. So basically, you're lying down, so it's easy to stab you, but it's hard to shoot you with a ball. To respond to Nico, um, in like my quick six second burst, uh, to murder the fog, and I'm just going to uh, try and get it in shooting range, uh, and that ends my turn. Okay, so you. you so is that you your could double? probably do a double move. You could do a double I move, but then you couldn't keep you. I did an investigation check, that's a whole action. Correct. Okay, yep, you are correct. Um, so you made it part way, uh, which brings us to the fog. <laughs> fog moves. Whisks. I like watching this little foggy thing just like slowly move down squares. Yep. Um, and now yeah, we're on I'm Nico's turn. I know what it means. Okay, uh, running out of options here, but, uh, oop, oop, that's the wrong button. Oh, I don't think I have control of Nico. Oh, is something going on with token control? Bear with me one sec, let me just double check whether I goofed. Represents character Nico, has the name Nico. I did. I created new tokens because you have to do that when you have new um, graphics, and we have our beautiful new portraits this time. So let me just see if there's something missing. That's the. Oh yeah. So default token. There. Uh, All right. Let me refresh. Uh, and while I'm refreshing, Nico's gonna shout. I don't know if you can actually murder something that's inanimate. <laughs> I'm gonna try! <clears throat> That's the point of interesting discussion, in fact, in some places. Because we're right next to each other. I'm still trying to figure out why I can't move Tom. Perhaps a related problem. Ah, That's what I was wondering. Alright, so sorry, where are we at? Yay. You, you have both accounts. Are you on the wrong account to move them? No. 
Although I'm going to try it on the other one just because it could be a shortcut. I added him did differently. You put Tom, did you accidentally put Tom on map overlay? I think so, but I'm going to try. I do notice he doesn't have a circle around him like the rest of us, and now he does. Yeah, there we go. You're right. He was in the map layer. Thank you all. That's the most common mistake in, in, in Roll20. Um, also an excellent program that doesn't sponsor us. <laughs> um, oops. Um, no, no. No, the world didn't really just shake. The tectonic uh, plates are shifting, everybody. <laughs> there. So, I'm, I mean, but now I can put Tom where he actually belongs. So. Uh, all right. So that was Nico's turn. Are you doing anything else with your turn, Nico? Um, can I tell if Mia is healed as much as she can be healed to? Uh, make a, if you you would need to make a medicine check to know that. All right. Let's give it a go. Decent. There we go. Yes. Uh, with that, you can tell that she is almost imperceptibly <laughs> physically wounded in addition to whatever juice was taken out of her. Oh, not the juice again? Okay. Um, since that was a that was a skill roll, I can't heal her right now. So that is it for Nico. Um, yes, while we're in combat, I guess that's true. Yes. Um, actually, no. Uh, yes, I'll be consistent. Yes, you you have a bonus action and a move. You've used your move, uh, so that's it for Nico. The fog um, seems to run away. What, what did that mean exactly? Um, oh. Like, like what did Nico learn? Uh, so Nico took a moment to take a closer look at Tanya to learn whether her, her physical condition was harmed, was able to see some harm, um, and. That took long enough that Nico can't also do something else in addition to running. Well, like, you don't know, like, how many, like, health points Tanya is down. Right, yeah, so um, I did. I specifically didn't give a number, but I gave something that implies a number, uh, because I don't Why care would too you, much. Like, in what case would you give a number? Uh, I probably wouldn't give a number. Uh, it's really up oh. to the style of the game. Um, I will say that you guys can see the numbers, and it's up to you to roleplay whether oh. you, you know, especially when information is revealed to you. Uh, but I don't like to put bring the numbers front and center too much. Oh, okay. But to know someone's health and, condition. And I was, yeah. And I was actually asking about Lamia because, oh. you know, this whole max hit oh. points shenanigans. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I thought you meant Tanya. Uh, so you get Tanya for free. Uh, Lamia, I think you, did you take any damage in addition to the six? Are you... uh, let me check. What's my max? I don't believe so. Yeah, if you're if if your current hit points are nope. six I'm less than your max, then you then you yeah. see no physical problems with Tanya. Or with with Lamia. Oh, yeah. Got it. With anyone whose name All ends set. with Ia. Uh okay. Sorry about that. So that's um Nico's turn. Looking a little more gaunt than usual. Yes, but the same amount of gaunt as uh, as an hour ago when when everything went down, or less, probably minutes, ago, twenty like minutes ago. Me. Oh, a little, yeah, a little, 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 um, yeah. All right, uh, Miraja, you've got uh, less fog. Uh, there is still residual fog, but no clumps. You've got uh, all the all the people are most of the people are starting to move. In fact, I think all of almost all of the last. Four turns or five turns have been people moving in the same direction. Okay, um, well, like, so, but, like, Tom Tom isn't, um, like, out of view, there, right? Like, he's just here. He's still here. You can still see. He's mid-run, so effectively he is still running. He hasn't really stopped. It's just that time doesn't tick forward until, yeah. He's like, um, and it's like no, it's, it's it's worse than that. It's really bad. Uh, he's an old gangly man. He's um, like one of those, like, uh, used car, like, full Almost, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, 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 you know, with velocity. Which makes yeah. it, which I guess means he'd be flapping backwards. On wheels. But, yes. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah. he's um, hustling. Okay. So I'm kind of like stuck between wanting to learn more about like the fog. Like has that fog has always like existed, but like not in the way that it's behaving. Is that right? Yes, it has been misbehaving since only very recently. Like you, the first okay. time you've seen it try to hurt anybody or misbehave is here, but you have seen the place tending to revert to a foggy form if you're not near it more often over time. Um, but that's not the same as it being aggressive. That's totally new. So the pizza is aggressive. So, like, I want to know more about the fog, but I also want to know more about Tom. Um, like, the fog's 
like behavior. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe I should do like some sort of check on one of those things. Are yeah. either are any of you guys more curious about one versus the other? I suspect that Tom knows more about what's going on than any of us, and uh, so I would would start with him. Okay. I bet we'll I bet we'll be able to find more fog if we want it later. Mm -hmm. Good point. Okay. Well then, like, can I do some sort of check on like this guy and like learn more about him? Um, so you have two options. If you want to know whether you have heard of him before and what you've heard about him, you could make a history check. If you want okay. to know what like what his deal is or what his motivations are to read his mood, that sort of stuff, that would be an insight check. Okay. Um, so let me look at my insight. Ooh, I have plus six insight so that's cool. like amongst my highest there's also perception perception is is like using your senses to sense see or hear things insight oh. is specifically like empathy Wait, yeah, for, intuition for yeah yeah okay um do you guys are you guys interested in an insight check very okay okay i'm gonna try and if not i was gonna do it on my turn because i also have oh, okay. <laughs> insight so okay i'm scared please work are you oh, no. Oof. So especially when they're animated, it's really rough because you watch them like... Uh, they see so, a lot more so, than in real life. So with the mm -hmm. Nine, you can tell only that which is very easy to tell, which is that he is confused and uh, frantic. I've noted it's eight. Oh, sorry. Oh, I um, oh. There's, there's more stuff I can do, right? I see three plus six is nine. No, no, a clock. Oh, it is eight. Sorry, yes, that was the next oh. thing I was going to get around to. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, um, but, but yeah, more on her turn. Sorry. Yes. You you your, so that would that would be an action to, to do that. Oh, okay. So you could also move and or take a bonus okay. action. Um, maybe I will, like, run after him. Can I do that? Yep. You can, okay. Yep. That. Well, you need to move around things, so because the the, oh. the 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 brown I'm pointing at the screen as if you can see it. The brown is uh, is is the bookshelves. Oh, but okay. you can make so it basically like, the same distance. Like Six squares and diagonals count. Did, did I do that right? Six. You were one or two. I think you can move one more if you wanted to and be right behind but him. But then I would be like right next to him, which is kind of awkward, so. Still five feet away from him. It's not like snuggling. He's still it's, social distancing. Yeah, this is still within, you're, you're, yeah, you can still social average. distance and be in different squares, yeah. Okay. So you could move one so, more. Like, wait, put it next to him or like? Yeah, you, you would not be awkwardly right close to him then. Those are five foot squares, so you'd be. <laughs> okay, so you'd be, okay. All right. All right, so I think, does that make it time, I believe? Um, I want to do um, a couple of announcements before uh, the break that I forgot to do at the beginning, uh, and then we'll do some more after the break. So um, I, I think I may have mentioned this, but we do giveaways during the show. Uh, if we get natural ones uh, and we all remember, uh, we should be giving away. I got one. Woo yeah, I was going to say, we did do one. So what I want to do now, and I'm going to go look at the chat while I do this, is uh, we got a natural one. We don't yet have 25 people watching, which means we'll be giving away stickers. So um, when I say the word that is spelled out G-O and that one doesn't count, uh, the first person in the chat who uh, says uh, the code word, which is going to be uh, pointy, like the wizard's hat, uh, will win some fourth place or Heroes of Four World sticker. So I'm gonna say the word pointy, uh, and if anyone uh, get, says that, Whoever says that first uh, will we'll get the stickers, and I'll handle that during the break. Uh, you won't get the stickers during the break. That would be weird. Um, <laughs> but we're going to take a 15-minute break now, so I'm going to put up a different screen that says we'll be back or something. Uh, everyone here is going to get to use their favorite facilities, um, and in about 15 minutes, we'll be back. So please don't leave. Uh, we want you to catch what happens next, uh, either here in the library of the Land of Dreams or maybe even in the Halls of Prophecy. Be back soon but we're not actually out now because I didn't have that screen up. <laughs>